So here, for example, you can try to find some um, academic paper. You can just give me an example of what you want to find. Just give me, I don't know, some keywords or whatever. We'll download some PDF and then we'll check it using this uh, application. I know, just give me some idea. What paper are you interested in? Yeah. On which topic? Anything. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. I know in vaccines uh, will be good. Because actually. Hmm? Uh, let's try. Okay, okay, let's try. I'm not sure that uh, the style for report uh, of statistics vaccines uh, COVID. Mm, let's, just, let's try. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, the style of reporting uh, is the same for uh, medicine, but all this logic that was discussed today, no hypothesis significant, significance testing, it works uh, in medicine too. So actually, it's the main uh, statistical approach that is used in medicine, in biology, psychology, linguistics, or uh, political science, or whatever. So let's try to find some empirical paper. Mm, I'm not sure what, which one is empirical. Uh, and efficiency, maybe this one, but I'm not sure. Because of course we need some, we need some uh, empirical paper not just review. Uh, because in empirical paper, you have this uh, statistical tests and so on. Uh, I think they use confidence intervals. Efficiency, yeah, confidence intervals. Uh, it's actually very, actually mathematically, it's the same approach as a uh, null hypothesis significance testing uh, based on p value, uh, but just with different angle. Um, maybe try something different now. Mm -hmm. Efficiency. Oh, we can actually try for Sputnik. They're safe and effective. Okay, let's try Russian vaccine for COVID. <laughs> Thank you, like Russian. Uh, like vaccine has nationality. Uh, da -da -dum. Let's check. Um, yeah, they use confidence interval two, and it's very small. Uh, side effects. Well, let's try to, to check side effects. And I think uh, uh, for scientific reports, it's uh, uh, I think they use just normal p value standard uh, notation because. I have a paper in some reports. <laughs> uh, let's check statistical analysis. Uh, no, just just uh, like uh, exploration studies. So they don't even yeah they use this p less than zero zero five, but uh, I I don't even see when where do they use it okay maybe we can try something more close to uh, linguistics because i know for sure that psycholinguistics uh definitely will use this uh, standard notation for example i know linguism linguism and whatever recognition you know working memory maybe i will see anything on the shared screen not showing only html code um let's check because maybe uh yeah now it should work the reason and cognition let's say even working memory Thank you. 
Okay. Da, da, da. Not meta analysis, but just some empirical study. Hmm, okay, maybe like this. You have PDF, and that will be good. Uh, yes, they have PDF, but how to download it? Maybe this way. Mm -hmm. So results. Oh yeah, they actually use Nova. That is a bit more complicated than uh, just a test, but the logic is the same. So you report uh, statistic name, degrees of freedom, uh, statistic value, uh, and p value. Some, some uh, sometimes you use anything else. For example something else, for example, FX size, and so on. We'll discuss it uh, later, I think. So let's try to use this paper and to use it in stat check. And let's see if we can find any results. Uh, that's a shame that it didn't. Uh, recognize. Okay, maybe we'll return to it later. Let's return to our uh, our studio. So you can download this uh, files from Telegram. We'll start with a, uh, just wait a bit. Um, you don't use computer today? I uh, don't know. I just like to share some somehow with Telegram. Ah, okay. Uh, but don't you want to use computer for our coding? Yes, I do. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> but I, uh, I just uh, do not want to download the. Ah, okay, okay. Um, I know, yeah, you can use your mail. So, I think we'll use a bit bigger. Yes, exactly. Okay. You see what happens uh, on the screen. So, what this whole uh, statistical testing is about? Why do we actually provide statistical tests? Why don't we can just you know, calculate some sample, compare data, just you know, calculate means and say, yes, it's bigger, yes, it's smaller. Why do we conduct statistical tests in general? What, does it, what was the goal of all this uh, uh, spending um, marker, or big whiteboard. I mean, what is the global idea behind that? What is the problem that statistical testing tries to solve? We want to estimate how confident the system is. How what? How confident the Confident in what? The probability of error. Mm, probability of making error. Let's think about hypothesis. Like uh, when you conduct research, you actually want to uh, like disprove 
hypothesis. Uh, and this way you can just highlight your hypothesis. Like, uh, Operian uh, falsification way to just show that uh, other hypotheses are wrong and not consistent with data. That's why your hypothesis is well somehow supported. Uh, so when you have calculated, for example, something, let's say this sample one. Uh, and let's calculate sample mean from that, right? We calculated that it's uh, 182 and six. So can we say that, so if we know that uh, there is some population mean uh, 180, can we say that uh, actually, uh, we sampled from another uh, population with a higher population mean. Can we say it? Like, uh, actually, this mean is higher than in population. So, it seems that it's Pretty good idea, right? But we, we have an, uh, another idea, opposite idea, that actually this mean sample mean is higher than our population is just because it's random noise, you know, from, uh, some just uh, random things that happens because it's actually random variable, right? So it is our new hypothesis that we want to disprove that uh, the difference, uh, the effect that we found in our study, and we will uh, find uh, some effect in almost all cases, like uh, always sample mean will not be the same as population, right? Uh, and always the difference between group will be not zero, right? Uh, we want to somehow prove that this difference is not uh, due to some chance. And what we try to uh, do with our uh, null hypothesis significance testing to just disprove this hypothesis about this random noise. Uh, and what we, uh, what we want to show that probability of getting such difference, uh, or even larger difference in groups, or larger effect, uh, is so small that we can reject this one hypothesis. It's an important idea, actually, the main idea of no hypothesis significance test. Uh, and if you understand that, you will understand actually the whole, okay, almost the whole uh, statistical test. Uh, yep. USB stick. Ah, okay, yes. Uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me think. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, export. I think I can even file, uh, I think I can export uh, the project, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, maybe it will be easy because, uh, yeah. So, okay, let's calculate some, we have some sample and let's calculate some sample. So we want to test whether, um, whether uh, calculate this, whether having the sample mean is actually, uh, uh, you know, rather probable 
uh, outcome if the null hypothesis that population mean uh, is 180 is true. So that's way uh, for, for, for uh, calculating that we can conduct a p-test and get the p-value and obtain an answer. Uh, so let's run this. So this is the way how uh, R uh, does the t-test. So it calculates the t-statistic. Do you remember what is a t-statistic, how it's calculated? Hmm, like in general, maybe it's not some details. It's a sample mean minus population mean by hypothesis, right? Uh, divided by uh, square root of n. Actually, we can even calculate it by, cell, by ourselves to test that one sample test is uh, correct in R. So what does uh, our sample mean? Uh, sample mean, uh, we, we didn't, yeah. Uh, sample, uh, let's, let's do it another way. Let's create an, a chunk of code. Right. Sample one mean. Let's go. Uh, let's save it in a n. So we have a hypothesis that population mean is one hundred eighty. So uh, in our key statistic, it will be uh, m minus one hundred eighty. Uh, so next we need to divide by standard error, uh, our estimation of standard error based on our estimation of standard deviation. We don't know standard deviation, so we estimate it uh, based on our uh, sample. We can calculate it. Sample one, sorry. Sample one. But it is a standard deviation. We need a standard error. How to get a standard error based on standard deviation? Take yeah, uh, no, that not uh, do not take root, but uh, take root of yes, sample size. How to get a sample size? How do you think? Just calculate length of a vector. Length. Yeah, so this is just this will return five. Uh, sorry again. Go one. Uh, 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 this will return five. Actually, we don't need. I think. I, I think we don't need this line. We can just. Write it in one line. And let's go. Uh, I think was the dun -dun. yeah, now it's correct. And look, it's the same value as we have here. So we actually uh, reproduced the test statistics. So you can actually learn that there is no uh, magic inside this uh, t-statistic computation, it's just the same as uh, Ilya showed you on a whiteboard. And actually, uh, we can even save it. <clears throat> actually, we can even calculate the value, you know? It's not that hard. Uh, remember, I showed you probability density function. We'll use it now. Uh, we use norm. You know, commodity distribution function is a, a function that for some value uh, gives you a probability of getting uh, this and smaller value uh, as an outcome. Okay. 
uh, we, are, we use norm, now we use PK because we have K distribution, not normal distribution, but the logic is the same. Uh, we use uh, T and uh, we need to say uh, GF, uh, we need to select, uh, we need to set GF, it's a degrees of freedom, so it's uh, sample size minus one. Pum, pum. Link sample one, sorry. And uh, the problem is that uh, uh, it, it gives you the probability from minus, uh, from minus but you want something the opposite. Let me show you. We have this and for example zero, one, and so what's here you have our statistic select our team variable. And function PT to play the interval from minus infinity to this value. But actually we need the opposite. Our p value will be this area after. So actually to calculate this, you just need to calculate one minus p t in this specific case. And let's uh, compare it to our mm, no. Uh, I wrote something. Everything broke. Uh, and really, I don't know actually what I did, but it looks not so bad, right? <sighs> so let's see. Yeah, we have exactly the same p-value, right? Cool. So we can see that there is no magic inside this uh, uh, t-test calculation, just quite simple formulas. Uh, so you can even calculate it by yourself. Of course, you don't need it in real life because you have these functions and uh, R uh, has many uh, functions for different tests, statistical tests actually by default uh, because it's, uh, mm, uh, because it's, uh, uh, program language created by statisticians for statisticians. So return. Let's return to our p statistics. A p statistic. What can we? What uh, um, uh, conclusion can we uh, make based on our p value here? That is the most important decision, right? Yes, and what does it mean? Yes, what null, null hypothesis, right? And what is our null hypothesis? No, no. Uh, it's a uh, yeah. There is a specific uh, test for normality, but this uh, uh, this uh, test is for testing that. Uh, population mean uh, that the sample was sampled from a, a distribution with a sample uh, with a population mean 180. Right. And we cannot reject null hypothesis. Can we, uh, based on that, uh, say that null hypothesis is true? Well, no. And that's the biggest problem uh, of null hypothesis significance testing because. There is something like a symmetry of conclusions. If you have p-values less than 0, 0.05, we can reject null hypothesis. Uh, and it's strong word. We can say, yes, it's very improbable to get such uh, extreme result if our null hypothesis is true. So we can reject null hypothesis. But if we cannot reject, well, maybe there is a fact and it's very small. We actually don't know. So let's try to do it on other 
uh, vectors. Try to do it to do it by yourself on the same population mean 180. Yeah, and try to guess the result uh, before you try to test it, whether it will be significant or not. Just look at numbers. What do you think about the first one, actually? Will it be significant or not? Look at numbers. Uh, now uh, you uh, have the same hypothesis that the sample comes from uh, populations with a, uh, with a mean uh, 180. 180. Why? Because the, uh, the numbers are quite similar. It's quite so. Even two thousand, two hundred and ten, it is quite close for one hundred. I don't know. We we talk about sample two now. First, uh -huh. do you think that uh, it will be significant or not if you compare it to? 180. Yeah, why? Yeah, exactly. So, so imagine it is a uh, very strong uh, normal distribution with a uh, uh, with a uh, Population mean 180. So it will be on, on one side with very small uh, standard deviation, right? That's very actually, I think it will be a very, it's very improbable situation, but it's very improbable outcome based on our null hypothesis. Uh, so I think the p value will be very small, but test it by yourself. And make your own conclusion, and then we will do it together. And, uh, like, uh, yes, you're the same 108. Right. So right plus if you uh, if you uh, do the test uh, on sample two in Zoom or just I know raise your hand and make your conclusion about what hypothesis and then the next hypothesis. Okay, and what is your reason? Right. Yeah, we don't compare p values. Uh -huh. We don't compare p values to each other. Yeah, and we can. Which one? So, do you think there is an effect or not? Okay, so uh, what do you think about uh, alternative hypothesis? Like the alternative should be more likely than the. Well, we, we cannot compare the likelihood of two hypotheses in this case. What we can say is that we can reject no hypothesis, so we somewhat accept alternative hypothesis. But we cannot compare uh, probabilities of this hypothesis. You can do it in Bayesian approach, somewhat, but it's completely different approach in statistics. And yeah, it's uh, somewhat trendy now, but it's uh, much less 
popular than metabolically significant testing file. So what do we get? So yeah, which conclusion do we have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. So I hope everyone eat this. So let's run test on that sample two. Actually, one uh, one sample test is rather uh, rare method. It's used sometimes, but it's quite rare, actually. Alternative was great, breaker. Uh, if you don't know in which uh, side there will be difference in your data, uh, you actually um, need to uh, multiply, multiply your value by two because uh, if first, if you have no hypothesis, that okay, that's far from our version, but okay. Uh, the hypothesis is this, uh, that there is no effect, there is no difference to zero, for example, uh, and you get some value. Uh, actually, uh, you uh, will be. Uh, I was surprised even if uh, it goes uh, negative to your uh, hypothesis hypothetical uh, population mean. So uh, uh, usually you don't know whether your values will be lower uh, than uh, some value or higher than some value, for example, whether uh, different different groups will be positive or negative. Uh, so uh, it means that if you populate this area uh, after some t empirical, you actually need to populate uh, the same uh, um, the same area uh, symmetrical area from this uh, distribution. And actually, it means multiplying this area by two. And that's how actually uh, uh, t-tests are conducted by default. So if you explicitly say that your hypothesis is that uh, true mean is greater than 180, alternative hypothesis, uh, uh, it will not divide your p-value by two. But if you don't say that, by default, it will uh, multiply your p-value by two. It's quite uh, quite default option, actually, in statistics. OK, let's calculate a uh, t-test on this uh, sample. Oh, yeah, we, can, uh, we have very small p-value, right? So what is the p-value again here? Is that, uh, uh, the probability to get these values from random sampling from 180, these values, or even this statistic, uh, test statistic uh, calculated by uh, from these values, uh, or even more extreme statistic, right, uh, is so small if the null hypothesis is true. And that means that we can reject null hypothesis and say that. We want to accept alternative hypothesis. Okay, so what do you think here? Uh, will it be uh, uh, significant or not for sample three? What do you think? Any ideas? Just try to look at numbers before you test and give some, because I'm not sure. Actually, what I think here is that uh, almost all values except for 180 are larger than our hypothetical population mean, but 
the standard deviation is quite big. So maybe it's quite probable. So I'm not sure whether it will be significant or not, but I think I can guess that it will be not significant, but I am not sure really. Uh, so please conduct the test by yourself and let's see what happens. Yeah, then our hypothesis. So, what about our hypothesis? So, like, uh, it's measured in then something that we can determine. Yeah, it's a uh, simple mean. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, so. So, uh, there are alternative hypotheses seems to be rejected. No, we start with no hypothesis. We actually talk about no hypothesis. We, it's like, uh, you know, from geometry, uh, there was, was a proof uh, from Reverse then of what was said in prediction. prediction. Yeah. Uh, so it is the same logic. You just want to uh, so, uh, we want to produce statement, get yeah, contradiction. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, and find some contradiction in the statement. In this way, you want to say that's uh, the statement is false because there is a contradiction. And that's why our original hypothesis uh, is uh, true because uh, the opposite one leads to some contradiction. The same logic is applied here. So actually, we start with the null hypothesis, but we won't reject it. So we have, right? Right. Yeah. So I was wrong. It was uh, significant, but you can see it's closer to zero zero five. So it was not that um, that improbable. So actually, uh, maybe in some cases, in something like uh, two percent uh, uh, of cases, even if our uh, population uh, mean is one hundred eighty, so no hypothesis is true. In one, uh, in two, three percent of cases, we will get even higher uh, test statistics that than what we obtained here. Right? Okay. Again, what? Uh, uh, let's do it on sample four. What do you think? Will it? Yeah. Uh, not, uh, not complete, uh, uh, what, uh, how uh, the two statistics correspond to the statistics? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, actually, it, uh, it is not necessary to statistics. Actually, in uh, statistics, you'll we'll get F statistic, Z statistic, uh, C quadrat statistic, uh, and many other statistics. Uh, and it doesn't actually matter. So we just find some statistic, we get some uh, uh, theoretical distribution, how it will be uh, distributed uh, under the assumption of null hypothesis. And that Hilke is working here. Uh, and uh, then we make um, replace the value and make, make our decision. That's why actually we discussed this uh, sample distribution previous time. So remember what is a sample distribution of the mean, for example. What is a sample distribution of the means? From the previous uh, seminar. Mm -hmm. 
No, I mean, what are the, no, sample distribution is a, uh, you get some population, and there is some distribution, uh, uh, some normal variable with some uh, functional, uh, with some distribution. Yeah. And imagine that you uh, draw some samples with some sample size from this uh, population. You draw samples, you draw samples again, and again, it could be big samples, for example, n equal 1000, or it could be small samples like n equal 5. So this is 5, this is 5, this is 5, this is 5, and so on. And you take, you calculate some statistic. Statistic is just uh, some value calculated on sample. Uh, usually, we, uh, of course, you know about descriptive statistics like uh, mean, median, uh, standard deviation, variance, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, test statistic is the same thing, but uh, it has different purpose. So, uh, test statistic is uh, just like a descriptive statistic, but the goal, the goal of uh, test statistic is not to describe some sample, but just to be used in statistical tests. So, uh, for example, we discussed uh, sample distribution of the means. So here we calculate uh, uh, average x for every sample. Get here something, here something, and so on. And it will be somewhat close to population mean, but never. Uh, it will be never, at least for continuous distributions, uh, it will be never the same as uh, population mean or distribution. Uh, and we can even we can draw distribution of the sample means. And what we know from the previous seminar, previous lecture from the previous week, that this uh, distribution will have normal curve form. Uh, even if our population distribution was far from normal. So it was like um, that, mean was here, uh, and what's interesting, mean of the sample distribution will be the same. Uh, but we can use not uh, uh, means, but for example, z scores. Uh, z scores uh, actually will be uh, the same as mean statistics. Uh, but what will be the difference between uh, sample distribution of the means and sample distribution of z statistics? Do you remember what z statistic is? That is, uh, that is uh, uh, sample mean minus population mean divided by standard deviation. Uh, population standard deviation, assuming that we know. So what will be different, uh, what will be the difference between uh, sample distribution of the means and sample distribution of Z statistics? The distribution of that will always be standard. Exactly. Yeah, so actually, we just, uh, you know, we move uh, this, uh, uh, our sample distribution, uh, sample distribution uh, to zero and set standard deviation of this distribution to one. So actually, sample distribution will be always standard normal. With, uh, with mean zero and standard deviation one. Okay. So, uh, actually, we can even draw a uh, sample, uh, sample distribution for testing. It will be, as we discussed, a little bit different. 
What was the difference between that statistic and this statistic? Do you remember? Okay, what was the formula? Like, uh, exactly like Z, but we have uh, X below. Uh, Oh. Yeah, the difference was very small. Some, um, like under the uh, line, we have a sample distribution. Uh, we had sample, uh, sample based uh, uh, estimation of standard deviation. So it's actually estimation of that. So this is uh, very similar, but this one is real uh, somehow. Somehow we know this uh, uh, stand, um, standard deviation population, but actually in real life we we, we never know. Uh, the statistic is the same, but we uh, calculate it based on estimation of standard deviation based on our sample. So, for example, uh, we divide not by I don't know. If you talk about IQ scores, we divide not by 15 because we know that standard deviation uh, is 15, but by some estimation of that, that it can be 14 or whatever based on our sample. And because of this uh, uh, complexities that uh, actually we have the formula uh, estimation of mean divided by standard deviation estimation based on mean estimation. Uh, that statistic is a bit different at, compared to that statistic, and form of the distribution is a bit different compared to uh, that distribution or uh, compared to normal distribution. So it will be a uh, different, a uh, difference very small. And actually, when sample is uh, sample size large enough. The difference between state distribution and normal distribution is negligible. Negligible. That's very small. So the real difference is only in all, in very small samples. Uh, actually, uh, here in the TTS, uh, we have uh, Yeah. But uh, how does it uh, like correspond with our decision to reject? Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for reminding uh, the original question. And that, uh, here we go to our uh, original null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is what our null hypothesis uh, is. Basically. So let's compare, uh, let's say that our uh, null hypothesis is like in here. It's a uh, uh, mu equal 180. So, uh, knowing this hypothesis, we can actually, uh, and knowing our sample size, we actually we can, um, how to say, uh, simulate, not simulate. We can draw our uh, distribution of test statistics, how it will look like in the case that the hypothesis is correct. So we'll have something like that, right? In, uh, if we uh, take many, 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 many samples uh, from, uh, the, for example, normal distribution with mu equal 180. Here will be 180. Uh, there will be some standard deviation, and all uh, these statistics will be distributed like that. So most of them will be uh, around zero. Ah, sorry, so the mean will be zero because we normalize it. Uh, but some statistic will be uh, higher and lower than one, than two, uh, and so on. So now we draw this our like model. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we can say that we model our sample distribution. 
of uh, selective statistics based on our null hypothesis. So all this thing was about uh, actually modeling our null hypothesis model, null hypothesis view of the world. And now we compare our model uh, to our empirical data. So for example, key statistic is uh, 12 and something. Right, this thing will be 12 and something axis. It will be very far right. So it will be actually something like uh, something like here. And we calculate the probability of getting this. You know, what is the probability to get this exactly uh, test? Actually, it's zero uh, because, you know, it's uh, to get exactly uh, 12.538 uh, and something. In fact, in something, uh, probability to get this value is zero. So, what, what we can talk about is what is the probability to get uh, 12 uh, and something and higher testing. So, it will be area from 12 to infinity. And you can see by this picture that this probability is actually very low. So again, it is the probability of getting this T statistic uh, in the experiment if our null hypothesis was correct. Of course, I repeat the same idea many, many times, but it's really the, uh, the most important idea in statistics, and actually, it's one of the most uh, important idea, ideas in uh, modern science because uh, actually, all uh, almost all empirical science is based on these two values, and uh, actually, understanding uh, this new hypothesis, significance testing procedure, is one of the main things you need to understand in the world. Like, I know, like, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry you uh, don't understand. Uh, why uh, should we understand that 12 for this T uh, one third is mm -hmm. very far? Uh, because the center is zero. Like, uh, but we don't uh, like, uh, so we just should uh, ah, we can, uh, imagine how the curve. Is like the sure. uh, Sorry? So we just uh, think that here variance is uh, not so big. Uh, so that, uh, like, uh, the length of uh, the um, sample deployed is a constant, where it is smaller, like, in mode than 12. Mm, again, could you repeat the question, please? And I think we can model everything. But, but okay, let's model it further. So, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so I, I still don't uh, understand why, uh, like, we, we don't have uh, a curve here. So, how would we? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yes. Why do you think that? Uh, why do you think that uh, sam uh, uh, sample means will be distributed like that, like this one? It's actually comes from this uh, central limit theorem that uh, the norm, uh, the form of uh, um, uh, sample means will follow normal distribution, and mean of this uh, sample distribution. Uh, of the means will be uh, actually a population mean. And standard deviation of this uh, uh, sample, uh, sample distribution of the means uh, will be, uh, will be, uh, um, Standard deviation of in the population divided by square root of n. 
And thin distribution is a bit different, but very close. Uh, so it's a, a bit uh, more complicated, but the logic is the same that uh, knowing uh, uh, we can we can uh, model our distribution of uh, of uh, many sample means uh, based uh, on our small sample. How this sample means would uh, will look like uh, based on our sample. Let's uh, let's try it. So let's start. I know I will start maybe another script. Uh, let's uh, return to our sample. Uh, let's say not this one, but the last one that we tested. This one, right? Okay, mm. we can calculate sample mean. It will be the mean of the sample, right? Uh, we can calculate a uh, standard error. It will be a uh, standard uh, deviation of sample three. Uh, divided by square root of uh, n, so length of three. Uh, so our uh, test statistic will be uh, m minus one hundred eighty divided by SEM. Okay. So that's what we uh, know, uh, that, uh, that's our empirical uh, test statistics that we receive. Uh, now we can uh, model uh, our, uh, let's say that um, we, let's model many uh, samples uh, with a size size five and equal five. Uh, n equal five and uh, new uh, no sample. Let's do our norm in this case from normal distribution, for example. But as you know from central limit theorem, it can be normal distribution, it can be a you know, low normal distribution, or whatever distribution that has uh, uh, actually standard deviation, at least somehow measurable. Uh, and uh, uh, should be not so like skewed too much, but even log normal will be okay. So mm, mean will be 180, and uh, as there will be uh, like based on our standard deviation from uh, uh, our sample. So this will be. Uh, like another sample uh, under the null hypothesis. It could be a sample uh, from uh, the population if our null hypothesis is true. And this another one, and this another one, and another one, and so on. We can even, you know, um, let's call it uh, simulated. S. And we can even uh, calculate a uh, test statistic for this simulated. Uh, let's see what we get here simulated S. So you can see that mean of that will be not exactly 180, right? Because it just has some noise, right? Uh, and then we can even calculate test statistic that will have this exact sample. Uh, so we just use this formula. Uh, oh, we can even create a function that will calculate T. Function 
x uh, mean x uh, mu equal 100 uh, mean x minus mu uh, divided by as the x divided by square root of length x. Yeah, we just uh, created the function that calculates a test statistic on a uh, on a sample. Related. T. Yes. So yeah, that is a test statistic on simulated sample. We can uh, draw another simulation. And we'll get another another statistic. Oh, hyphen something. Well, it's actually quite rare, I think. Minus one. Yep. Uh, yes. So it means that uh, sample mean sample mean is a uh, sample mean is lower than uh, our uh, hypothetical population mean. we can even calculate it so yeah you can see that most of the values are lower than 180 so uh, mean sample mean is lower than uh, is lower than population so you can see that if you simulate many times, uh, sample mean will never be 180. So the statistic will never be zero. It will be somehow distributed. Sorry. Somehow distributed. Somehow distributed. Uh, let's uh, uh, go further with our simulation. And let's uh, simulate it many times. Uh, mm, e of this one. So we calculated many, many times. For example, one hundred thousand. Many t. No, uh, I forgot. I think square. Oh, so good back it's it will need some time. Oh, okay. And now we can uh, draw this distribution of test statistics. How do you think uh, the distribution of test statistics will look like? Like all, all the uh, mean, mean, mean here are, I think, something like uh, zero, one, minus one, and five. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the mean of the distribution will be zero, mm -hmm. and it will be somewhat symmetrical. And actually, it will follow, um, yeah, I think I will put breaks. Breaks uh, one hundred. Yeah, it actually uh, it looks like a normal distribution, right? Actually, it's t distribution. You can see the difference uh, by i. You will never um, say that it's a t distribution or normal distribution. Uh, so even for small uh, sample size, uh, t distribution really uh, looks like a normal distribution, but with a bit uh, heavier tails. Uh, no, it's included here. So you can see that there are some values. Yes, but 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, now we can see because we are uh, that many times that how we can uh, see it from before in this image. Uh, because uh, mm, because we uh like uh, because we know we can analytically derive this distribution for known uh null hypothesis. So. Uh, these are our uh, distribution of test statistics for uh, our null hypothesis that uh, uh, our samples are uh, 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 derived from uh, the distribution with uh, mu equal to 108. We know that it's true here because uh, we actually uh, draw samples from uh, the distribution with a mean 108, right? And we see uh, here is our like uh, model of the world. If uh, uh, simulated model of the world, if a null hypothesis is true, right? Uh, we can derive the same uh, analytically. We can actually do something like that. And there are some methods that actually uh, do some kind of simulations and estimate p value based on the simulations. Uh, but uh, for uh, simple methods like t test, we can just uh, use key distribution. Uh, we selected uh, degrees of freedom uh, to get this curve. You don't need to sample it uh, with uh, many, many numbers. So this is exactly. Uh, p distribution with uh, four degrees of freedom. Again, so we don't need to do the simulations in real life, right? Uh, so we know that our t statistic uh, in uh, uh, under the null hypothesis will be uh, distributed like that, and we can see that our empirical t statistic is somewhat here, right? So we can even compare how many times. Uh, key statistic in our uh, population, our uh, statistic, right? Then, oh, we have, let's call it key empirical. Key empirical. Key empirical. And let's say how many times the empirical is more than uh, many key. And we'll calculate ratio. This will return now uh, to us a uh, very big logical vector. Uh, we calculate mean of that. It will actually, no, sorry, not here. Mean. So if you calculate mean on this vector, it will uh, return us a ratio of uh, true in this logical vectors. Vectors, so actually, uh, yeah, number of cases where the empirical is higher than this value. So actually we need the opposite, one minus something. And this is a uh, like a, ra uh, a ratio of, uh, of times where our, uh, in our simulated model, uh, key statistic is even higher than our empirical statistic. And you can see this number is very close to what we calculated with our t-test analytically, right? What we calculated with PT distribution, uh, with TM, uh, DF uh, equal four and one minus that. Um, right, very close to. Um, I'm not sure whether I answered your question. I'm I'm actually really not sure because I I have a suspicion that you asked me about a bit different thing, right? Okay, we can try. Yeah, we are out of time, but we can discuss it later maybe because actually this is the most important concept in the course, I think, and uh, it's hard concept. It's not easy concept.
And actually, it's very sad that uh, in science, many uh, researchers use this concept, they use p values, but actually, I think maybe even most of them do not understand the whole logic of the thing. But it's very important, of course, because uh, all our scientific knowledge for today is based on this uh, scheme. So, okay, uh, we'll do even more simulations uh, uh, during the next seminar. Uh, I hope it will be fun and we'll return to uh, the values and understanding, uh, understanding of them uh, on the next seminar. So that's all. Thanks.